I'm the strategist of Investec Asset Management and you are watching Risk Africa TV. The basic message is we are at the dawn of an age where we have near free energy and free water. This age um, is, as you say, been hiding in plain sight. The problem for water and energy has been staring us in the face, as it were, for 70,000 years. Uh, the sun, the wind, seawater, we just have to find a way of harnessing them uh, in a productive way. The interesting thing about all three of those items is that they're a feedstock that comes for free. We pay for coal, we pay for oil, we pay for uranium if it's going to go into nuclear, but we don't have to pay for sunshine, wind and seawater. They're there. We just have to find ways of using them. You know, the United States probably grew up uh, to being the huge country it has become during the age of carbon, starting with coal but then moving on to oil. Uh, and, uh, you know, even today the United States still thinks of itself, as it is indeed it is, as a, a, a mega player in the world of oil. The reality is, is that China cannot grow to be what I expect it will become on the back of oil, on the back of carbon. So it has to find something else to power its rise. And it has discovered renewable energy. It has uh, decided that it's going to dominate the industry, dominate the production. Uh, at the moment, it has a huge issue in terms of imported energy requirements, uh, coal, uh, oil, gas. But it does have a huge area of China uh, that's very sun friendly. It has a huge area of China that's very wind friendly. So all it needs to do is to set up mechanisms for harvesting the sun and the wind inside of China, and it will no longer in the future need to be able to have to import huge amounts of oil and gas as it is at the moment. So this is why China has made this huge decision. It also happens to be profoundly green, and China was facing a huge problem in terms of the environment. Uh, as you well know, if you visited Beijing, everybody seemed to be wearing masks. You never saw the sun. Um, and the, the rivers were becoming more and more polluted and it was ultimately related to uh, the use of very, very dirty energy. They are now attacking that as if their lives depended on it, which, in a way, they do. I think that if you could stand back and look at the world today and say, so what two things, if you could suddenly produce them, would almost guarantee you being awarded uh, the Nobel Prize for Peace. Uh, and my answer would be uh, free water and free energy. Uh, and I think we are pretty close to being able to do that. Until now, um, we have been blocked. Uh, we've been blocked um, by a system that was wanting, for instance, to support nuclear energy. And by the way, nuclear energy cannot be established now without the help of government. It is not a freestanding, viable, free market option in the world of energy. It needs a subsidy for it to work. And we were caught up in being uh, hijacked almost uh, down a path that insisted the government get involved. And we were staring the uh, solution in the face in the form of the sun and the wind. Interestingly, South Africa, um, like few other countries on Earth, sits in the overlap between the wind zone, which is essentially uh, South Africa and to the south of us in the southern hemisphere, and the sun zone, which is South Africa and to the north of us towards the tropics and, and the subtropics. Um, and we are in both zones, and not many countries can say that. So we have incredible opportunities from the energy side uh, to harness both the wind and the sun. We also happen to have a ridiculously long sea coastline. So um, once we can harness that energy um, and apply it to the desalination process, um, we have huge amounts of energy that we can tap and huge amounts of water that we can uh, clean up and use productively. Uh, I think we haven't yet got our minds around it fully. Um, I don't think many people around the world, with the possible exception of the Chinese, have. Uh, and even the Chinese are still struggling. We are, it's so ingrained in our 
almost our DNA as humans at the moment, that we use carbon uh, to generate energy. Um, and seawater is not something that's generally speaking available for productive use. Uh, if you change both those things, um, not just the insurance industry, but, but pretty much every industry is going to have to change the way that it does business. same message that I would have, broadly speaking, to anybody who is looking for investment opportunities, and that is be careful about making yourself overexposed to yesterday, to old industries. Uh, Warren Buffett says the best way to deal with a disruptive new technology uh, is not to invest in who you think the winners from that technology are going to be, but rather avoid the losers. So if, as an insurance industry, you're heavily backing uh, the oil industry or the coal industry, um, you're probably on a hiding to nothing. Um, it's only going to get worse. There will be periods of respite, um, but I think that is a, an industry which is changing. You can look at what's happened, moving it into the world of investment, to the great companies of GE and Siemens since 2005, when they were probably the, between the two of them, two of the great industrial companies on the planet. They are now both uh, in serious uh, straits. Uh, struggling in some respects for their lives um, because they missed the rise of renewables and they were caught in the production, for instance, of electric turbines. Um, and those electric turbines were based on coal and, and oil. Uh, that's not the place to be. Uh, so don't buy horses just as the car arrives.